Hello there once again. We have come to the epic finale of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes, part 6, the final episode of this limited series, has dropped on Disney+. Plus. The entire season is now available to watch. So now I talk about this finale and my thoughts on the series as a whole with spoilers, so that is a spoiler warning. If you have not watched this entire series by now, and you plan on it, you should probably steer clear of this video, unless you don't care about the spoilers. Alright, you have been warned. Let's wrap this series up. So part 5 left off where Reva apparently found out about Luke Skywalker on Tatooine and I was like what's going on there? It left me confused. This last episode starts off where Reva is now on Tatooine and now she's apparently looking for Luke Skywalker because I guess she wants to kill him? It's her own personal form of justice. Alright, I guess, but I guess this episode forgot one fatal thing. She got gut stabbed by Darth Vader in the last episode. Look, I get revenge does wonders for the will to live, but again, I still think that's bullshit. Honestly speaking, I don't think Reva should even be alive in this episode. Cause her whole thing where she's going after Luke, again, there's no tension because hello, Luke lives. And even in the end of Reva's arc, fast forwarding to the end, where she does decide not to kill him, and instead she decides to just go her own way. I was like, what was the point of all that exactly? I mean, I love a good redemption arc as much as the next guy, but unless Reva is gonna become a much more relevant character in later Star Wars stories, which could happen, I'm not gonna rule it out, but if that doesn't happen, I find this whole last Reva arc in this episode completely useless. I honestly think for the sake of this story in and of itself, it would have been better if Vader had just killed her in the last episode. Or better rephrased, it would have been better if she had actually died. I do think that would have been a much better end to Reva's story for the sake of this Obi-Wan limited series. Again, if we're gonna see more Reva later on, cool. Then maybe I'll change my mind about this. But for now, I just don't like how Reva's story ended. It felt kind of anticlimactic, at least in my opinion. But of course, the cool stuff happens with Obi-Wan and Vader in a little bit. Since the citizens are getting away, the Empire's going after them, and Ben's like, all right, I can get the Empire off your tail by distracting Vader. I'm gonna go down to this planet, and Vader's gonna follow me down there, and we're gonna have another rematch. And so, all right, now we get to the big Obi-Wan versus Vader fight of this limited series, the whole thing that it's been leading up to. And I have quite a few things to say about this fight. First of all, the way it starts off, the dialogue they exchange, Vader goes, Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? To which Ben says, I will do what I must. Of course, that being a callback to his line in Revenge of the Sith. But yeah, that does conflict with a line from Return of the Jedi that a lot of fans have brought up. Where Vader is talking to Luke, and Luke is trying to convince him to come back to the good side, and Vader says, Obi-Wan once thought as you do. Well, in Revenge of the Sith and now this limited series, we never see that from Obi-Wan. We've never seen that from Obi-Wan. We never saw Obi-Wan try to bring Anakin back to the good side after he became Darth Vader. So yeah, this limited series does retcon that line. But you know what? That is not the only line from the original trilogy that this series retcons. Remember the scene in the first movie where Ben's talking with Luke and he says, I haven't gone by the name of Obi-Wan since before you were born? Yeah, that's like the first thing this limited series retconned. So I don't really sweat it that much. These retcons are pretty trivial. I mean, Obi-Wan never wanting to bring Vader back to the good side, I guess is a bigger deal. So I am gonna ding that, but I'm not gonna let it ruin the entire series for me. There was still some pretty darn cool stuff in the show. And then we get to this climactic duel between Darth Vader and Ben Kenobi. Which, honestly speaking, I didn't like how it was edited. It cut a lot and there was a lot of shaky cam. If I'm being honest, I thought the fight in the third episode of this series was better than this one. I thought it was lit better, I thought it was shot better. This fight just seemed a little poorly edited to me. And poorly shot. And I'm talking about when the lightsabers are clashing, you know, that part of the duel. The dialogue is good, and you can tell that the emotion both actors are putting into it, that's really good too. Vader's grunting loud, you do hear the hatred coming through in that, that's really cool. And then there's the part where Vader touches the ground, he's like, That is why you will always lose! And he buries Ben, that was really cool. And then we see the angle looking up at Vader, and I was like, Ah, Vader has the high ground, that's awesome! There was a part of me that almost wanted to hear him say, Now I have the high ground. But nah, that would have been too cheesy. But you know we were all thinking that. Then Obi-Wan raises a bunch of rocks with the force like he's Jesus or something. You hear the choir going on in the background? I was like, that's really cool. Alright, Obi-Wan's got his force mojo back. It's about time. This is where the fight starts getting really cool. When it gets dramatic and epic like this. It's nothing to do with the lightsaber fighting itself. It's the force stuff and the emotion and the dialogue. And so Obi-Wan throws all the rocks at Vader, it's really hurting him. And then he starts slashing at him again and he gets his chest machine. I was like, ooh, I've never seen that happen before, holy shit. And then sure enough, he slices part of Vader's helmet, which I did predict that was gonna happen. 
Because let's face it, in a climactic Vader duel with these characters, one of the most dramatic things you could have done, they already did in Star Wars Rebels with the Ahsoka fight, because that's what happened. Ahsoka will later do the same thing four years later. She'll slice off part of his helmet. That was such an awesome moment in Rebels. And once again, or should I say for the first time, it happens here and once again it's awesome. Cause now it's in live action and so we see part of Hayden Christensen's burned up Anakin's face. And this, I gotta say, this is the best acting from Hayden Christensen I have ever seen. Not that that's saying much. All right, rephrase, this is the very first scene in which Hayden Christensen's acting has impressed me. That look on Obi-Wan's face, it really does say a lot because he sees the man who was once his best friend, his brother, he truly sees what he has done to him. This is really the part where all that guilt comes tumbling over him. He should have broken down and been like, I am so sorry. I mean, he does say that, I'm sorry for all of it. To which Vader responds, I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. I took that to mean, you know, like some Star Wars characters have said, Anakin Skywalker and Darth Vader are like two different entities of the same body. Like Yoda said in Revenge of the Sith, Anakin has been consumed by Darth Vader. And so I guess this is what leads Ben to explain to Luke in the original film, a young Jedi named Darth Vader, who was a pupil of mine before he turned to evil, helped the Empire hunt down and destroy the Jedi Knights. He betrayed and murdered your father. You know, when Obi-Wan defeated him in Revenge of the Sith, that was supposed to be the death of Anakin Skywalker and the rise of Darth Vader. He's a completely different human being at this point. And so that's what I took this line here to mean. And I think that's pretty damn cool. And then Ben says, then my friend is truly dead. Goodbye, Darth. And he leaves. And that's that. Yeah, all right, that dialogue was pretty freaking amazing. In fact, that whole scene, that whole dialogue exchange was pretty much the best scene in the entire limited series. That was some good shit right there. And so Vader retreats back to Mustafar, and he has a little exchange with the Emperor. Ian McDermott makes a cameo, and they're pretty much like, yeah, that sucked, but we're still gonna hunt Kenobi, and the Emperor repeats one of his lines from the original trilogy. I wonder if your feelings on this matter are clear. Which, that does always kind of frustrate me when that happens. Like, why the exact same line? I mean, I guess it's not the exact same line. He doesn't say on this matter here, but it's close enough. I don't know, just whenever lines like that are repeated, I always see it as forced. No pun intended. That also goes for when Obi-Wan said, I will do what I must earlier in this episode. Again, that's really trivial, but it came into my head. Also, the fact that this entire limited series went without anyone saying, I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh well. And so the scene on Mustafar ends, that's the last we see of Vader in this series. And it's funny, in that final shot of him, Natalie Holt was finally like, fine, fuck, here's your Imperial March. Yeah, thank you. Jeez, I loved it. Nice of the Imperial March to make a cameo in this limited series. I did like the fact that in this episode, we got quite a few of those original John Williams themes, finally. The Force theme, Leia's theme, and the last scene with Leia when Ben says goodbye to her. This was actually a really good scene too, some really good dialogue here where Ben says, you have these qualities that you inherited from your parents. Yeah, that was really good. That was really well written. You're kind-hearted like your mother. You're passionate like your father. I thought that was great. Bye-bye, Princess Leia. Nice knowing you as a kid. Regarding Leia in this series, I gotta say, she was never, like, my favorite part of it. At first, I didn't really like her character that much because I was like, she's acting more mature than she probably should be. But then as the series went on, it almost felt like it was pushing her to a background role because there were bigger things going on, like Vader. Ironically, that's when I was actually all right with Leia. So there that is. But I will say that I do think Vivian Lyra Blair is a good actress for a kid, and I hope to see her again soon. And so the series ends. Of course, Obi-Wan goes back to Tatooine. He goes to Owen. He's like, all right, I'll keep my distance. He should be a boy for now. And then Owen finally breaks and he's like, all right, Ben, you want to meet him? And so this is the scene where Ben meets Luke for the first time. Pretty big deal, if you ask me. And he approaches him with that T-16 Skyhopper toy and says those classic magical words. Hello there. Although it's funny, in his delivery of that line, I got the sense that Ewan McGregor was actually really tired of saying that. Because he knows he's a fan favorite, and he knows that fans just want him to say it all the time, and I'm sure he's gotten dead-ass tired of it by now. And I actually got that sense from his delivery of it here, because he's like, Fine, fuck, I'll say the damn line. Just that look on his face is like, I don't want to say it, but it's in the script, so I have to. Or at least that's what I got out of it. I probably wouldn't get that out of it if I didn't know that about him, but whatever. In context of the Star Wars saga, it is really good. So well done writers on that. And then the very last scene, we finally get our Liam Neeson cameo. Yes, Liam Neeson returns as Qui-Gon Jinn's Force Ghost. And I like this dialogue too, because he's like, took you long enough. 
And Ben goes, I was beginning to think you would never show up. To which Qui-Gon replies, I've always been here, you just could never see. I took that to mean that communing with Jedi who have become one with the Force is a really difficult skill to acquire. And Obi-Wan has finally got there. I actually really like that. Now Obi-Wan can finally train with Qui-Gon's Force Ghost. That's really cool, I think. And so that is where this limited series Obi-Wan Kenobi ends. All right, so in conclusion, Obi-Wan Kenobi, honestly speaking, I could take it or leave it. I mean, if the events of this series never happened, you still have Revenge of the Sith and everything else leading into the original film. This limited series didn't really do a whole lot for the characters. It showed us some really cool looking stuff, some great moments with Darth Vader. He, of course, was the best part of all of it. Reva was really cool up until the last episode, then I feel like she was kind of wasted. Young Leia was alright. Ewan McGregor's acting was amazing. And who knows, I mean, this series did kind of leave it open, Reva could be out there anywhere. Ben is training with Qui-Gon now, maybe the story could continue in some way, shape, or form. I don't know. So yeah, in the end, I didn't hate this series, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, a solid 7.5 out of 10 overall. It could have been better. But again, that's just my opinion. So now I want to know your opinion. Obi-Wan Kenobi, part 6, and the entire limited series as a whole. What are your thoughts on the whole thing? Do you think the story could continue in any way? What was your favorite scene in the whole thing? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And of course, thank you for subscribing. Peace!